it feels like a weight of the world's on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I had to tell what had come to me. It didn't come to me till I'm laying over. You're saying that something happened to you when you were in the hospital that you didn't remember mm -hmm. until you got home. Until I got home. And then? It came to me. Okay. The thing I remembered is a being in hell. Myron, could you please explain first how you viewed God, how you viewed okay. Jesus before July 14 of 2021, and um, and just explain your spiritual condition. Okay, when I was uh, a young guy, my uh, older brother got saved and was baptized, and he used to take me and my sister to church and Sunday school. Well, my mom, I only seen her walk two times. <laughs> and I found out that God can heal people. So every night, I prayed or I asked God to heal my mom. I wouldn't see her walk. It never happened. So from a little 10 years old, eight years old, how old I was, I hated God. So that's where I was at for all them years. I'm 72 years old. Mm -hmm. Then my heart, then my chest, I had chest pain. So my wife took me to Hosier Hospital and they kept me and they done a, call a heart cath. And they, when I woke up, I asked the, the surgeon, I asked him, uh, well, did you put some more stents in me? Or he said, I, it's too dangerous. I can't do anything for you. So he recommend that I go to Cleveland Clinic. And they took me in the ambulance to Cleveland Clinic. They had to take a vein out of my arm, about 12, 14 inches long, and go from one side of my heart clear to the back side of my heart and tie it in. I'm laying there on the bed ready for surgery. Mm -hmm. thinking I'm a good person I'm either going to get to come home or I'm going to go to heaven well that, that ain't the way it is but that's the way I believed it was mm -hmm. so uh, some some somebody come in the room, this person he told me what he was he didn't say he was a minister or a preacher mm -hmm. and uh, he asked me if he could say a prayer for me and I said, I don't reckon it would hurt anything. She says sarcastically, uh -huh. because I didn't need it, see? I was gonna to go to heaven or I was gonna come home. So they come and got me after he said his prayer and well, that's what I said. He wasn't a big guy and he wasn't a little guy. He was dressed in clothes I'd never seen before. I've never seen nobody dress. He wasn't fancy and he wasn't plain. I don't know how to explain that. But he was dressed differently than anybody I ever saw before. So anyhow, he said his prayer and he left. And so shortly they went to the operating room. So then you go to sleep. You think it's a long time. It may only be 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know. But you wake up. But I got to waking up and my pillow was wet. I was crying. Next day, I don't know, I woke up, and I want to hate people. I've always hated people. I don't hate nobody. That all went away. I can't hate nobody. I never cried like that. I never wet my pillow, just tears. Well, I didn't understand what was happening. So, the hate went away. I went through the recovery part, and uh, they started giving me sponge baths. And she'd run her finger down my back. And I couldn't think of what in the world is she doing. So she went and got another nurse and showed her. But they didn't say a word. I didn't know I had a burn mark on my back. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to have to go walk, and I, uh, she was there to help me, and you had them gowns on, and I didn't want everybody to see my rear end while I was walking. So, so she's tying, she's tying the gown up for me, and she's seen that mark on my back. I told you it looks like a bird. You're yeah. saying that something happened to you when you were in the hospital that you didn't remember mm -hmm. until you got home. Until I got home, and then it came to me. Okay. First thing I remembered. is in being in hell. I saw the big hole in the ground. He lets loose of me. And, and the first thing I remember was wrestling with him, trying to get loose from him, the devil. I was wrestling with the devil. I saw a steel cage behind me with the door open. When he flew me in there and dropped me, he let go of me just like a, like an eagle or would let, you know, with one, he'd carry me with one foot. And he drops me and it's solid rocks. When, when he let go of me, it's like you step out of a moving vehicle or off an old tractor. I had to take two or three steps and he takes two or three steps. And then he gets a hold of me and he's got me. And he's trying to put me in his cage. He pushes me backwards to push me in the cage, but the door's open and my back comes right up against the door. And I'm pinned there. I can't get loose. But the next thing I know, I look down and I'm on fire. I'm burning up. I saw my flesh dripping on that solid rock. The only thing I could do, I know to do, was scream for help. What else would anybody do? And in an instant, someone, that, that angel that came to see me in the hospitals, who I think it was, that's what I told my wife, it was the same person that came in that room, jerked me away from that and took me back and put me in that operating room. She just said there is no way that in an operating room, I see you anything. There's uh -huh. nothing there that will burn a patient. When I was burning up, I was on fire and that angel came and got me away from the devil and put me back in that operating room. Well, the surgeon nice. told us that we probably wouldn't see him no more after the surgery, but he oh. came to see us. Okay. And he had a story to tell us. For some reason, my stomach it just, just swelled up greatly. So he gets these light, and they got that tube down my throat, and he's looking for blood or what's going on. Mm -hmm. Said as quickly, as rapidly as my stomach, it left. That's when he put the far out. When he broke me back, he put the far out after he put me back in that operating room. Several days later, I take my first shower, and she pulled, it looked like the, where a snake sheds his skin. She pulled the skin off of my legs that was where the blister or whatever. There was no blister marks, but the dead skin was on my legs. She pulled it off when we took my first shower. I went to hell yeah. and I got to come back. Now, why did he do that for me? But he did. That's Jesus and God brought me back to earth. And what my mission is, is that whatever he tells me. That's why I got to tell people. I got to tell this story. I believe every bit of it's true. Based on everything you experienced, what would you say to somebody who either doesn't believe that God or Jesus are real or they believe they're real but they don't think they have to serve them and they think if they're good enough they'll make it into heaven? What would you say to that person? 
I just, I'd sell, I felt the same way and I'm 72 years old and I found out that I was wrong. It, it don't work that way. If you, if you're not in the good graces of God, you're not going to go to, you're not going to go to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven now. Now, all I did was say, help me. I need help. I screamed for help. I asked for help and I really needed it. <laughs> he saved my soul is what he done. He's what he did for me. And he'll do the same thing for anybody that asks him anyway. If you ask him, he'll save your soul. But you've got to ask him. If he'd take me out of that place, it'd be easy for anybody to get saved. <laughs> you don't have to go through what I went through. But he gave me three the greatest gifts that anyone can give you. He took that hate out of my heart. That was the first. I couldn't even tell my own son that I loved him. I couldn't tell my daughter that I loved him. And then he filled my heart full of love. I can tell, yeah, I don't have to know someone to tell them that I love yes. you. It's, a it's completely different than when I went to Cleveland. When I came back, I was a different person. The greatest gift that he gave me is I'm not in hell. I got to come back home and be on this earth. Now, how long I, if it's one day or one more hour, I don't care. But I got to come back. That's the main thing. I got another chance. I got a new life, got a brand new beginning. So now I might mess it up, but I'm going to try not to. <laughs>